Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the IBM Transformation Extender product. Today's topic is using the ITX launcher with Docker. Follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Let's start with the topic of why you would want to run the launcher inside a Docker. Well, it becomes a question of scale. Um, if you have a system that you want to run and mostly you have uh, a certain level of data throughput, but you have occasional need for higher throughput, you could design your system so that a single Docker can cope with the day to day and maybe a month end period you spool up a second or a third Docker containing a launcher that would share the workload and increase uh, throughput. On screen you'll see some of the command lines that I'm going to be using today. Uh, don't worry about the fact that it look, all looks very confusing, I'll go through it slowly. Um, I'm going to demonstrate running two launchers today. So the top command line is a, a command I'm going to use to spool up Launcher 1. As you can see Launcher 1, 1 is the name that is given to it as well as the host name. Now I'm using some V parameters here and this is to ensure that files that are outside of the uh, system are mapped to uh, files inside the Docker. So the items in, um, in red are outside the Docker and the items in blue are their equivalents inside the Docker. So let's just go through that first one there. You will note that I'm mapping the, a systems directory in my main Linux machine to a systems directory inside the Docker. This is so that I can place my MSL file for the launcher to read and start up. My second V command there, you can see that I'm doing the same with a file, dtx.ini. This is so that I can configure all the launchers to behave exactly the same. And I've turned on launcher startup logging. Uh, the third V parameter there is a general directory uh, inside the Docker called forward slash data. Outside the Docker I'm using itx-ls inside my home directory. Okay, the commands after the run. Um, the next one along there, the docker exec, allows me to go inside the docker where I then run the next three commands. The first two being configuration and the final one there, launcher-summary. Uh, is a command to see what the launcher is currently doing um, and what it has done from a history point of view. Moving on to the second set then, that's the second launcher that I'm going to spool up. Uh, the name is Launcher2, the host name is Launcher2. It has exactly the same dash V mappings. The only difference here is I'm not going to go inside the uh, docker with a docker exec command with uh, the bash parameter. Instead I'm going to run all those three commands that I, I did before um, as docker exec commands. So I'm going to do the two configurations and then get the summary of the current system using uh, docker exec at the command line um, multiple times. Let's move on to the demonstration part. So here we have my SSH connection to my Linux box and as you can see I am logged in and I have used sudo to change to the root profile. I am going to show you that I am currently in the downloads directory of a user called Makata. Um, I'm going to show you that I have a file that I'm going to install which is the version 1003 launcher docker image and I'm also going to show you that um, I currently do not have any docker images that contain the word launcher. I do actually have some docker images um, these are namely the TX REST API and uh, the design server client but uh, we're going to be ignoring those for now. We're going to add to this list and what we're going to add is um, at least one uh, image that is going to be the launcher. So let's do that now. So the command I need is the docker load command 
and we're going to use the dash i parameter to point it to an image that we have on our disk which is the .tar.gz file that I pointed to earlier. What this does is it extracts from the uh, gzip file and builds an image for, um, for Docker to use as a, as a template for when you, went, you want to instantiate um, a container, a container uh, instance which contains a, a running launcher. So there we go, the image is now done. So let's just bring up the list of um, images again, uh, grepping for the word launcher. And you can see that we have uh, an image now that includes the word launcher. And uh, we can instantiate an, uh, a running launcher from that image. I'm going to paste it in my command and then I'm going to walk through what each part of it does. Okay, so here we have a docker run. We're telling it that the host name of the container is going to be launcher1. The name of the container is going to be launcher1. We are going to have an internal work directory of opt IBM WSDTX. Using the V parameter, we are going to map certain directories and files from our current file system to the inside of the Docker. So here we have home Mercator itx ls systems directory will be inside the docker forward slash opt forward slash ibm wsdtx forward slash systems. We're going to take a dtx.ini file that I have on my native Linux box and we're going to map it to the internal dtx ini file um, for the launcher to use. Now the reason for this is that my um, native uh, file system has a copy of the DTX INI file that I've made a couple of changes to. The first of those changes is to enable launcher logging by removing the semicolon from the launcher logging equals EWSC line. And the second change I made was to enable the cooperative file listener. So this will enable multiple launchers to trigger against the same uh, directories and it will use um, some staging directories to accomplish that. The final dash V maps the general home Mercator ITX LS directory, which contains my maps, my input and output directories and such, and maps them internally to the container as forward slash data. The final parameter is the image um, address and um, then this is the command that is going to be run internally when the um, docker is to start. I'm going to hit enter here. So the um, launcher one has been kicked off. Um, this actually uh, blocks this session. So what I'm going to do is just fire off a duplicate session here, login and change to the um, root user again and we're going to do docker ps-a to list all images. Let's make that bigger. I'm going to close that original one because we don't really need that now. Um, let's issue that command again. Okay, so you can see that we have um, a container um, with the launcher and the name of it is launcher1. If we now change to the itx-ls directory, here we have our inputs and outputs and our maps directory. If we go into the inputs directory now, you will note that some staging directories have been created. Now these are repeated on the inside of the docker as forward slash data. And I'm going to show you those now. So let's do um, docker exec um, it. I'm going to go into the launcher one docker and I'm going to run bash. Okay, we're inside the docker now. If we go to the data directory, and do a list, you will note we have exactly the same files. Okay, let's come out there for the moment. We're back in the native machine and we're in the inputs subdirectory. So let's um, pop something in there that's going to trigger the launcher that is running and I will show you that um, the file is picked up and transferred to the outputs directory. Let's have a quick look in outputs, see what we have now. We have a few files. I'm going to um, remove all of those. Okay, those files are gone. The outputs directory is currently empty. 
And now I'm going to echo the word stuff to in12345.txt. If we now list the directory, that file is already gone. The launcher has um, picked up that file and, and, and dealt with it. So if we ha again have a look at the output directory, we can see that in the output directory we have a file called out12345.txt. And if we have a look at the content of that, you will see it's the same word stuff, but it's been capitalized because that's what my map does, just converts everything to capitals. Okay, that's great. We have one launcher up and running. But let's do some additional administrative tasks here that will allow us to um, see what's going on inside the launcher. I'm going to bring up those command lines that I showed you earlier. And the first thing I'm going to do is run the launcher admin command to add a, an administrative user to the running launcher. Let's do that now. First thing we need to do is go inside the Docker. So docker exec dash it launcher one bash. We're inside the Docker now and we can run dot space dot forward slash setup and then we can paste in our command line. New settings have been saved successfully. Great, so we've added a user. Let's do the second command. This uh, creates a management console profile, so we can use um, some further command line tools to get the status of the currently running launcher. So that's created a management console profile. Um, if we just have a look, that has created this file here, management console.win. My first command altered this file here. Okay, and then the final command, which we're going to look at, is the one that's going to give us the status of the current running launcher. Okay, as you can see, in the history total maps, we have one. That's the one map that has run because of the file that I created. Okay, let's come out of the um, system and let's fire up a second instance of the um, launcher, uh, the second, second container. I'm going to copy this command line here, which is my launcher2 command line. We'll just quickly run through that again. So again, we have docker run. We have a host name set for launcher2. We have a container name set for launcher2. The same w, the same dash v commands, and finally the same um, image is going to be read. And finally, the same command is going to be executed on, on launcher startup. So that has actually blocked this session for me. So I'm going to duplicate my session. sudo to root again. And I'm going to close this session because we don't need it anymore. And now if we go into docker ps-a, you will note that I have two launchers up and running. We have launcher one and we have launcher two. Fantastic. OK, so for Launcher 2, I'm going to attempt to do the configuration commands from my native install just by running the docker exec command and pasting in the complete command that I want to put in. So let's try that now. I'm not sure that's going to work. Yes, it has. New settings have been saved. OK, so that's updated my launcher admin.bin file. Second command, that's going to create my management console.bin file. And this does mean that my uh, status um, line should work and tell me that the Launcher 2 currently has not executed any maps at all so far. And here we go. History total maps currently set to zero. OK, so let's go into itx-ls forward slash inputs. And let's create another file. Let's echo the word 2 to 23456.in23456.txt. OK, if we have a list, that file has already disappeared. And if we have a look at the outputs directory, we have out 23456 has been created. So we know that a map has run, but what we don't know at the moment is which launcher actually picked it up. 
I'm going to paste in my command line again to check the status. Oops, let's try that again. Check the status of uh, Launcher 2 to see how many maps Launcher 2 has run. And you will note that Launcher 2 has now run one map. And if we go back to our pr uh, previous command, let's pop Launcher 1 in here. Launcher 1 has still only run one map, I believe. Let's wait for that to finish. Yes, correct. History total maps, still one. So they've run one each. Now, in theory, it will not be possible to determine exactly which launcher is going to run uh, when I drop a file in the directory. But one would assume that based on the algorithm that has been uh, Im implemented, they will share the load relatively evenly. So let's create a couple more files. Okay, created two more files there, three and four. Neither of the files actually exists now. And if we look in the out directory, they've been created in there. And let's do a status of launcher one and launcher two. Um, uh, start with launcher one. we can see that the output for that, that's still only run one map. So when we check Launcher 2, we would have expected that to have run three maps. And there we go, you can see it has run three maps. So not quite perfectly even, but as time would move on and as files would appear, you would find that they would share that workload fairly evenly. If I was to require yet another container containing the same launcher, also looking at the same maps, I could just recreate, re repeat my docker run command, change the host name to launcher3, change the uh, container name to launcher3, and then I would have a third launcher looking at that same directory running those same maps. And should the workload reduce, I can quite easily stop one of those dockers with a docker stop launcher2 command. Launcher 2 uh, container stops, Launcher 1 continues running and will continue working on any files that appear in the inputs directory. Docker ps-a, we can see that Launcher 1 is currently up and has been so for nine minutes. Launcher 2 is now exited three seconds ago. Okay, so that concludes my demonstration for today. How to use uh, the launcher in a Docker environment and to map directories so that each of the launchers can be spooled up to share the workload as uh, requirement uh, dictates. I want to thank you all for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel as I release content such as this on a regular basis. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.